Judgment in the matter of Maurice Garner and another versus One Step Support Limited. Lord Reid will explain the decision of the court. This appeal is concerned with what are sometimes called Rootham Park damages, or as this court prefers to call them, negotiating damages. Instead of compensating the innocent party for the loss which it has actually suffered as a result of a breach of contract, negotiating damages are calculated as the amount which, hypothetically, the innocent party might reasonably have negotiated with the contract breaker as the price of releasing him from his obligation. This type of damages has its origins in a well-established approach to calculating damages for breaches of property rights where no harm is done to the property. For example, if somebody takes my car without my permission, I'm entitled to the hire that they would have had to pay for the use of a car, even if I would never in fact have hired it to them, and even if the car's absence caused me no loss and it was returned undamaged and with the petrol topped up. A similar approach has also been applied in relation to equitable damages, which are awarded in substitution for an injunction or an order for specific performance. If the court refuses to enforce my right by granting an injunction, it can award me damages based on the value of a right which, has declined, which it has declined to enforce, uh, calculated again on a negotiating uh, hypothesis. But the theoretical basis of these awards has been much debated. The present appeal raises for the first time at the highest level the question whether, and if so, in what circumstances, negotiating damages are available for a breach of contract. The case concerns the sale of a business on terms which obliged the sellers not to set up a competing business or to solicit the customers of a business being sold for a period of three years. After trial, the judge found that the sellers, who are the defendants in the case, had breached their obligations by setting up a new business in competition with the old one and soliciting its customers. He held that the claimant was entitled to choose to be awarded either negotiating damages, calculated as the fee that the defendants would have had to pay to be released from their obligations, or alternatively, compensatory damages, calculated as a loss actually suffered by the claimant in the form of lost profits and possibly loss of goodwill. The Court of Appeal upheld the decision of the trial judge. It considered that the test for awarding negotiating damages was whether an award of damages on that basis was the just response in the particular case, which it said was a matter for the judge to decide on a broad brush basis. The defendants have appealed to the Supreme Court. They argue that it is a fundamental principle of a law of contract that damages are designed to compensate the innocent party for the loss it has suffered as a result of the other party's failure to perform its obligations, and that the availability of negotiating damages in contract should therefore be restricted or abolished altogether. The claimant argues that negotiating damages are consistent with the compensatory principle and that the Court of Appeal was correct about the conditions for their availability. The appeal raises fundamental questions about the law of damages and requires the Supreme Court to consider basic principles governing the award of damages in contract, tort, and equity. It's an appeal with considerable practical importance. The Supreme Court unanimously allows the defendant's appeal the reasons for the decision are contained in a judgment by myself of which Lady Hale, Lord Wilson, and Lord Carnwath agree. Lord Carnwath also writes a concurring judgment, and Lord Sumption writes a separate judgment reaching the same conclusion. The court holds that common law damages for breach of contract are intended to place the claimant in the same position as he would have been if the contract had been performed. They compensate for the loss suffered as a result of a non-performance of the contract. Contract law damages cannot be awarded for the purpose of depriving the defendant of profits made as a result of a breach, subject to exceptional circumstances following the decision in an earlier case called Attorney General and Blake. Contract law damages are not awarded in a judge's discretion. They are claimed as of right and are awarded or refused on the basis of legal principle. It follows that negotiating damages can only be awarded for breach of contract where the loss suffered by the claimant 
is appropriately measured by reference to the economic value of a right which has been breached. The imaginary negotiation is a method of calculating that value. That value may be the measure of loss where the breach of contract results in the loss of a valuable asset created or protected by the right which was infringed, as in the case of the breach of a restrictive covenant over land or an intellectual property agreement. In the present case, the claimant's case is that it suffered financial loss in the form of lost profits and goodwill. Damages should therefore be awarded in, amount, in an amount equivalent to that loss. The case will accordingly be remitted for the judge to measure the financial loss which the claimant has actually sustained and award an equivalent amount in damages.